If you have never taken an online course, please don't be intimidated. This course is designed to be very user-friendly and was produced as a video for easy operation. At any time, you can pause, rewind, or fast forward the video in order to review the material further. If you have a question that is not answered by the video, please write it down. Then you can contact your field representative later to receive clarification. Before we get started, I would encourage you to be in a place where it is quiet and you can work through this material uninterrupted. It is also best that you view this course at a location where you know there is no question about whether or not you have permission to use the computer that you are at, and that permission should extend to using the internet for union-related business. Good day, my name is B.C. Craig. I'm the state treasurer for PSESEIU 1948. Today we're going to do a little bit of training on cha uh, chapter finances made simple. This is designed to help brand new treasurers pick up information to make their job easier and hopefully provide some information that even the more, more seasoned and experienced treasurers can find useful as well. BSE provides this information as a service to all of our chapters. We know it's important that we be fiscally responsible with the money that our members give us and we must keep good safeguards in place to protect that money and ensure it is spent appropriately and with proper authorization. During this training, we'll discuss budgets, various forms that are required to be filled out. We'll discuss state organization and some IRS requirements. Keep in mind that adequate and effective internal controls require that we have a separation of functions and responsibilities among the number of individuals who will actively be involved in the financial process. This allows us to provide a system of checks and balances over each other's activities. Remember, we got to try to prevent any possible misuse or embezzlement of our funds, or for that matter, even the appearance of such. So welcome, treasurers, and let's start off on a good note. If your chapter sends delegates to the PSE SEIU 1948 Annual Convention, your chapter will receive 5% of your dues back on a bi-monthly basis. Your executive board should designate who it is they want to receive the rebate checks, and they have to provide that information to the state office. Hopefully, this has already been done by your chapter leadership, and the state office is prepared to go ahead and send your chapter's rebates. We're going to talk about treasures and checkbooks. Please review your own chapter bylaws for the role that the treasurer plays and who has authority to issue debits against the chapter's accounts. We'll take a moment here to let you know Key Bank has graciously offered PSE chapters free checking. If you would like more information, feel free to contact Janin Woods at PSE Auburn at jwoodsofpseofwa.org or give her a call at 253-876-7443. She'd be more than happy to give you all the information necessary to work with your local key bank. I want to tell you, chapters should only spend money through a checking account that gives you good accountability. And when you use a checking account, you should have two signatures required to issue a check. The treasurer and one of the other executive officers should sign every check that spends money. Checks that are written to an officer of your local organization should never be signed by that individual. We recommend that each executive board member be on the checking account and authorized to sign checks. That gives you the maximum chance of having at least two people available whenever you need them. If you have both a savings and a checking account for your local, your funds should only be withdrawn from savings by transferring the money to the checking account and spent from there. The executive board should review all chapter bank statements at least on a quarterly basis to ensure that all expected deposits are being made and that each transfer from the savings shows up as a deposit in the checking account. I want to talk a little bit about your yearly chapter budget. Budget is just simply a plan to spend your money, and that's the heart of the matter. You need to set some time aside to budget, and you want to work as a team on behalf of your membership as you set this budget. Chapter leaders want to prepare and present a simple budget to the members 
We recommend the last chapter meeting before you adjourn for the summer. The budget should be for the upcoming school year. Your chapter leaders should prepare and present a simple year-end financial statement to the group at the first chapter meeting of the fall, covering the previous year's income and expenditures. Now, while the chapter treasurer should take the lead on these projects, must remember, it's not the chapter treasurer's job to carry the entire load. All of the officers of your chapter should help, or maybe you want to appoint a finance committee from the membership to help the treasurer in the accomplishment of these tasks. So setting your chapter budget. Remember, the budget comes before you spend any money, and budgets do not have to be complicated. Your chapter budget simply has to show how much money did you have on hand, how much money do you think you're going to take in over the next year, and how much money do you expect to spend over the next year. For example, most chapters probably only have income from a couple of sources, such as possibly your rebates, any chapter dues you have locally, and any fundraising events your chapter may choose to participate in. When it comes to spending money, I recommend you break that down into categories. Some of your examples might be any convention expenses for your chapter, any political assembly expenses, scholarships your chapter may choose to fund, sunshine funds, gift cards, and I highly recommend a category of miscellaneous for those things you just simply can't plan on. Your treasure report, once again, shows how much money did you have on hand, how much money did you receive, how much money did you spend, and hopefully, how much money did you have left over at the end. You need to be prepared for this meeting when you're going to discuss your budgets or present your reports by having the following items available. You'll want to want a calculator, pencils, paper, copy of your current contract and bylaws so that you know what you're supposed to do. You want to have your checking and saving account registers from the past year and any bank statements. And then, of course, last year's annual chapter finance report. A record of the events your members attended and how many attended what functions. What are your goals for the upcoming year? And what new things do you want to plan for and how many members do you believe will be involved? All of this goes into your planning stage. Here we've got a sample budget we'd like to go over with you. Thanks for watching this video on a proposed annual budget. Uh, what you're looking at on your screen is actually just one example of how a proposed annual budget could look. Uh, this one's kind of interesting because it actually uh, takes into consideration what was proposed and budgeted for in the previous year, what was actually spent in the previous year, and what you're proposing moving forward. Uh, so you'll notice that it's broken down. This column right here is what was proposed and budgeted last year. And this column is what you actually spent last year. Uh, and then what you're proposing for the upcoming year. And it also gives you the uh, luxury of adding some comments to each of those line items. Uh, so you can better explain what those expenses were. Uh, down here in this box is your summary. So it talks about what you currently have on hand, uh, what your expected revenue is, so your total expected funds, uh, what any uh, other obligations that you're planning for the upcoming year, uh, and then uh, leaves you with your undesignated surplus. This smaller box right here, uh, again, is just highlighting your expected revenue, and it breaks it down what, the, what those expectations are. Uh, so in this particular case of this chapter, they really only expect to gain revenue in two areas, which is dues and the rebates. Uh, and then it also gives you one other freeform common area where you can add any additional comments uh, there. Uh, perhaps the date that it was, the budget was voted on and approved by the membership. Uh, so that basically rounds off this presentation of this proposed annual budget. Your chapter may not have all of the expenditures on that sample budget, but however, list the sources that you receive money from and where you plan to spend your money. 
Again, some chapters may only receive rev revenue from their rebates and may only have expenditures, expenditures associated with chapter meetings, such as food or convention costs. Talk next thing we want to tackle is a few financial reports. The treasurer's report should always be prepared as required by your chapter bylaws and should be presented at each chapter meeting. A good financial report would contain the date of the reporting period. How much cash or savings balances did you have as of the last report? How much revenue or expenditures were done over that reporting period? And of course, any new cash or savings balance. Once the report is completed, it will be signed and submitted to the members for approval. Then a signed copy would be given to the chapter secretary for the records and they will be retained for seven years. I'm going to take a look at a couple of interesting bylaws over in Colville, their custodial bylaws. The secretary treasurer, notice they have one body in that job, receives and is accountable for all funds and monies. They pay all the obligations incurred by the organization and payment is authorized by the Board of Trustees. Also maintains the bank accounts and depositories designated by the Board of Directors. So the bylaws in the Cust Colville custodi Custodial Local clearly says what the responsibilities are for the Secretary Treasurer job. It also goes on to say that any monies withdrawn will only be done by checks signed by the president, the vice president, president and or vice president, and the treasurer. They have three executive members, any two of which can issue checks. Also, they shall render periodical financial reports. This is the secretary treasurer again, as required by the board of trustees or as the membership would desire. And, of course, they keep an accurate record of receipts and disbursements and shall act as the custodian of all properties owned by the organization. Quite an impressive list of duties for the treasurer. Take a look at your sample treasurer's report here. This was, would be presented to your membership at a regular meeting. Hello everyone and thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is going to be a video to give you an example of what your treasurer's report may look like if you've never produced one. Uh, it does not need to be in this format, but basically what you need to do is show what money you've spent, what money you've brought in, and what your remaining balances are. Uh, so this particular report is for a date range of 5-1-11 to 5-31-11. Uh, make sure though that you are checking your bylaws to see what your required uh, reporting structure needs to be. Uh, some bylaws bylaws may specifically detail what your requirements are and how often you need to produce your reports. Uh, so make sure that you check those before you start producing reports. Uh, so let's go ahead and just walk through this sample of a treasurer's report. Uh, so the date range again on this is 5-1-11 to 5-31-11. Our checks paid for the month are starting on 5-10 was to a local florist for Anne's birthday in the amount of $35.72. On 513, we wrote a check to Anne uh, reimbursing her for convention mileage, which was $73.42. On 515, we had to write another check to Anne. Uh, Anne purchased treats and brought them to the chapter meeting, so she was being re uh, reimbursed for those expenses in the amount of $42.17. Uh, on May 25th, we wrote a check to PSE, which covered our registration costs for legislative conference, and that was for the participants of Anne, Debbie, and Ray, and that was in the amount of $525. So our total checks paid in the month of May was $676.31. For income, uh, on the 2nd of May, we made a deposit from PSE, and this was a dues rebate in the amount of $545. Uh, the weekend of the uh, 16th, so the 14th and 15th, we actually had a car wash, uh, and that's our annual fundraiser. And at that car wash this year, we raised $102.50, so that deposit is reflected there on the 16th. 
And on the 30th, uh, we had interest paid to the savings account of $3.12. So our total income is $650.62. Our previous balance as of April 30th, 2011 was $347.16. Uh, income for this report period from the 1st of May to the 31st is $650.62. Uh, for a total of $997.78. Our checks paid for the month is $676.31. So our balance ending as of May 31st is $321.47. Again, thanks for watching this video. It is a sample of a treasurer's report. Yours may look slightly different, but keep in mind you'll want to reflect your uh, income and your expenses uh, for, for the period of the report. We're going to talk about a little financial reports, your chapter financial reports and audits. Annual reports are prepared from your monthly or your quarterly reports as they're prepared. The annual reports are retained permanently by the chapters, so the seven-year rule doesn't apply here. Chapters must submit this financial report to the state office by no later than 31 October of each year. Failure to do so means that the state may withhold any rebates until they get the chapter reports for that year. You see, PSE will file the 990N reports that's necessary for IRS. The local chapters do not file the 990N report directly to the IRS. Note that PSE will send a copy of the 990N and the IRS acceptance to the email address shown on the chapter's checklist. That way you as the chapter have a record that the 990N was submitted and the IRS did get it. So during the school year you want to keep a simple record of each expenditure. The expenditures can be reviewed during chapter meetings as part of the treasurer's report. Chapters should appoint an audit committee to review the financial statements and the bank records. This needs to be done probably in the fall of each year. The audit committee members should be people who didn't take part in preparing any financial statements. Remember all members have a right to know what's going on with chapter finances. They have the right to review or look at the chapter records. No member, however, has the right to demand copies of the chapter financial records. We want to take a look at the treasurer's worksheet to take, that they can use as they prepare these re financial reports. Hello everyone and thanks for watching this video. This is a video talking about what you might be able to use as a tool uh, in your role as uh, chapter treasurer. Uh, this tool is called the Tr chapter treasurer's report worksheet and it's basically um, a month-to-month -month form that you could use uh, just as a rolling form to keep track of your deposits and your expenses throughout the year. And then when it comes time to do your uh, reports, whether it's monthly, annual, uh, this document would help you produce those reports. Because you've already documented everything uh, in like your monthly report, and if you transfer that to here, this single sheet uh, could be your main worksheet to produce your annual reports. Uh, but uh, you could also go back to the monthly reports if you find some sort of discrepancy. Uh, so this is just a way to kind of keep all of your months together in one quick view rather than having to go through 12 different uh, sets of records or 12 different sets of reports to be able to figure out what your annual report will look like. Um, so the way the form is set up is actually just your deposits up on top and your expenses down below uh, and you'll keep a running total of what your uh, deposits are every month and what your expenses are every month and you can see that throughout the year some of those expenses would be consistent uh, such as here there's a line item here for meetings 
Uh, this may be refreshments. It may be some sort of an incentive, incentive to attend the meetings. Uh, either way, that's a consistent expense. And other expenses come up throughout the year, uh, say as the scholarship. Those may only come up as an expense once a year because you've uh, had applicants and you've awarded those scholarships at a particular time every year. Uh, it may come up throughout the year. It depends on how your chapter has set that up. Uh, other uh, annual type expenses might be convention. You'll see over here in July you saw the cost of the convention. Um, up above you'll probably see something consistent as well. So local dues are pretty consistent. You would be receiving those depending on your bylaws, um, possibly monthly. Other consistent uh, expenses that could come up on a regular basis is rebates, depending on how those are paid back to the chapter, whether it's monthly or a one-time annual fee. Uh, fundraisers, maybe you have a fundraiser every month, maybe it's occasionally throughout the year. Interest most likely would probably be based on a a monthly type scenario, although reflected here, it's only showing a sporadic uh, interest being paid. Uh, so this is an example of the chapter treasurer's report worksheet. Uh, and it's just another tool to help you do your job uh, and make your annual and your monthly reports a whole lot easier. Take a moment here in sideline and we're going to talk about that audit that we've said you need to do in the fall. The purpose of an audit is to verify that all the money that was received by your chapter was deposited into your appropriate accounts and all the money that was spent by your chapter was authorized by your chapter to be spent. To begin with, your audit, you want to have an audit committee. They need the chapter's checkbook, ledger seats, and the past year's bank statements. The audit committee should actually review each check that is written, verify that it was written for the amount that was authorized, and that it was signed by appropriate people authorized to make that signature, and that there is a receipt or a written signed explanation for what was purchased or what payment was made. The purpose is very simple. It verify, the purpose is simple. Verify the dues received. They were put into the account. The money was appropriately spent and that your checkbook and your accounts all balance. If you have a savings account, you'll need to review and verify all the activity for that account as well as you did for the checking account. The treasurer is there to answer questions of this committee. The treasurer is not there to perform the audit. Each member of the audit committee should sign the final audit and give the treasurer a copy for the financial records. Let's talk about those records and how long we're going to keep them. Treasurers are responsible for maintaining a file with all receipts and the copies of invoices for things that were paid. Accounts payable ledgers are required to be retained for seven years. Tax reports and checks, checks for taxes must be retained permanently. Bank reconciliations also need to be retained for seven years and any canceled checks, if your bank is still working with those, must be kept for seven years. Every chapter has an IRS tax identification number. This is also known as the employee's identification number, or if it's personal, it'll be your Social Security number. It works the same way for an organization. If you don't have this number or don't know what it is, you can simply contact Kathy Stewart at the state office at kstewart at pseofwa.org or a call to 1-866-820-5652. She can retrieve that number and provide it for you. Your tax ID number will be used on all your accounts that are maintained with whatever bank your chapter chooses to use. That number should be kept in a permanent file. You will absolutely have to have that number anytime you want to open a bank account. We're going to talk a little bit about the annual financial report now. Here's an example. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this video on uh, your annual chapter financial report. 
Uh, what you're seeing before you on your screen is actually a copy of the form. This form can also be downloaded online. The form uh, is a form that you can actually type in. All you'll need is Acrobat, uh, an Acrobat reader to be able to do so. And that is a free download and I'll actually have a pop-up window uh, coming up on your screen right about now uh, with that web address where you can actually download it. It will allow you to fill out this form and then print it uh, with the numbers already in there. Uh, one nice feature about the form is that it does have some built-in formulas. So this cell right here will be the sum of all these. This cell will be the sum of this. And then this cell is the, the basically the sum or the difference between these two. Um, this cell will automatically calculate based on what you enter into this field, which should be your beginning reconcile balance. And then this is the end result of these two um, adding together. So let's go ahead and get started with the form so you can see how it works. Uh, what I'm going to do in this example is just type in an example chapter because it's not tied to any one particular chapter. Um, you, of course, will type in your own chapter name. Uh, your employee employer identification number, or uh, it's also known as the EIN number. Um, you should have that, but you can also obtain it from Kathy Stewart at the state office if you need to. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to enter in some X's to represent the number. And let's go ahead and fill this out. So our local dues is our first source of revenue. And in this example, that was 1,176. Uh, rebates that we received in this example was $1,911.33. And you'll notice that this field right here automatically calculated for you, so this is really easy. No reason not to do this form. Uh, and then let's move down to our expenditures. So. Uh, in this example, we don't have any office expenses, but we do have some officer expenses at $391.77. Um, then our uh, convention expenses, $670. And our scholarship fund was $400. Sunshine fund gifts and cards was $655.68. Miscellaneous expenses, we had $193.80 there. Again, you notice that this auto-calculated here. Um, this field auto-calculated because we now have the two numbers that result in this number. Uh, if this were to show up as a negative number, it would have parentheses around it. And of course, a, a negative means a deficit, <laughs> so you want to try to avoid a deficit. And that's uh, good planning on the chapter's part to uh, have a good budget in place, which uh, uh, will not allow you to overextend yourselves. Uh, and then in this field, you just want to enter in your uh, beginning reconciled amount. So in this particular example, it was $1,206.32. You notice that this auto populated here, uh, which gives you this number here. Uh, and this last field, really what you can do is actually do your math ahead of time and you would take this number and add it together with this number uh, to get this number so in this <laughs> a lot of this numbers I I just heard myself uh, <laughs> but in this case you'll uh, actually just type in one thousand nine hundred and eighty two dollars and forty cents uh, so everything checks out on the annual chapter financial report if you do have questions about it, do not hesitate to give uh, your field representative a call or the state office. Call Kathy Stewart um, or even Janin Wood would be able to help you at the state office in Auburn. Uh, but that basically does it for this example of the annual chapter financial report. Again, this form is online for you guys to fill out and uh, once you fill it out, you can print it off and then send that right back into the state office. Thanks again. And now the annual checkoff sheet that will help you in preparation for all your appropriate reports. 
Hello everyone and thanks for watching this video. Uh, this particular video is actually going to be relatively short. It's about the annual chapter financial report checklist. This form is to be filled out and accompany your completed yearly chapter finance report as well as copies of your monthly quarterly statements and reconciliations of all bank accounts. Uh, and then provide a photocopy or a printout of the chapter's checkbook uh, as well. Uh, and basically this just serves as the reminder, uh, updates any contact information with the state office, and uh, has you sign the document saying that everything's been completed. So let's review this document really quick and go through filling it out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start up here on the employee identification number, the EIN. And again, in this example, we're just going to use a makeshift placeholder here. Uh, and again, uh, the chapter legal name, you would enter in your chapter legal name, uh, but on this particular one, we're going to call it the example chapter. You want to list out your chapter president. And the address that's on file. and then an email address as well. Down here, you're just using these fields uh, to, uh, as a checkoff, saying that you've provided these, these documents. Uh, so the first one is provide a photocopy or printout of the chapter's checkbooks from the period of September 1st, 2010 through August 31st, 2011. Every year this form is updated because it's due to the uh, uh, fiscal year. Uh, the next one down, you'll check, it says provide copies of monthly or quarterly statements and reconcil reconciliations of all bank accounts, CDs, and investment accounts for the period of September 1st, 2010 through August 31st, 2011 and the final one is provide a completed copy of the yearly chapter financial report. Uh, there is a, uh, a video, and you've probably already viewed that video, showing you how to fill out that form as well. Uh, then you'll go down here, and whoever's preparing this document would enter in their chapter title here. Most likely it would be the tre chapter treasurer, uh, but it could be the president. You'll provide a number here, and then an email address. And that's basically it for filling out the form. It's a very easy form to fill out. Uh, what you'll do now at this point is actually print a copy of this form. Uh, make sure that you sign that though in this preparer's signature area right here. Um, so don't forget to sign the form. And then attach all of the uh, accompanying documents to it. And go ahead and get it sent back to this address. Um, I believe Jan, Jan and Wood and uh, Kathy Stewart will also accept this in email form if you have the ability to scan these documents and email those back. Uh, so either way would be f uh, fine. Uh, if you do have any questions, though, please feel free to contact Janin or Kathy at the state office. And thanks for watching the video. So let's recap your IRS reports. Even if you don't have a chapter treasury, you will still be required to file a chapter financial report. All reports have to be submitted to the state office. Please do not send them to the IRS. Non-filing of the report will affect your exempt status for your chapter and possibly the exempt status of all of our chapters. If you don't submit a CFR, your chapter rebates will be withheld until one is received in Auburn. The IRS guidelines state if you have revenue over $50,000 per year, 
then you must submit a 990 form. This is a change from previous years where the amount was much less. We appreciate the time it takes you to do this work. At first, it may seem overwhelming, but if you stay on top of your monthly reports, you'll find that this process is pretty simple. It's only when we get behind that this job becomes difficult. Any questions? Okay. If you didn't get a question answered today, or you think of a question after we're done that you need to ask, please feel free to contact, contact the Administrative Service Department at the State Office. They're available for advice and consultation to any chapter treasurer about any chapter issue. You can email either Kathy Stewart at kstewart at pseofwa.org or Janin Wood at jwood at pseofwa.org. They're standing by at all times ready to help in any way they can. Thank you for taking your time today to go through this. Your service to your chapter is of vital importance to the members you serve. We thank you for your service to PSESEIU 1948. You see, all of your efforts on behalf of your co-workers and fellow union members is in the highest standard of what we look for. You deserve a medal for your energy, for your effort, and for your concern. Thank you again and have a wonderful day.